Good morning, everyone. My name is Kelly Kane, and I'm the Marketing Manager for Wonderwear NorCal. Thank you for attending our webinar today, Connecting Business Systems and the Plant Floor with Wonderwear Enterprise Integrator. After the webinar this morning, we'll, we will be doing a short Q&A. Please type any questions or comments into the Q&A box, the chat box, or email us at webinar at norcal.wonderware.com. Now I'd like to introduce your presenters for today's webinar. Your first presenter will be Wonderware NorCal's product specialist, Mike Lapitan, and your second presenter will be Abel Condrea, technical sales engineer from Callisto Integration. So I'll go ahead and turn it over to Mike. Good morning, Mike. Great, thanks. Good morning, Kelly. Good morning, everyone, and thanks for joining us for our webinar on Wonderware Enterprise Integrator, connecting business systems and the plant floor. So I'll be doing a brief introduction on Wonderware and how Enterprise Integrator can help in a manufacturing plant floor, and then we'll turn it over to Abel, and he'll actually have a demo and talk more about how to implement Wonderware Enterprise Integrator and the use cases, some real-world examples of where it's being used. Close Integration is actually an endorsed Wonderware System Integrator and the original author developer for Enterprise Integrator, so they are very familiar with it, and Abel has first-hand experience actually implementing it. So again, our agenda today, we'll look at Wonderware today in the marketplace and the basic product stack that includes system platform and our MES offering for manufacturing execution systems. Talk a little bit about what's the business value for connecting to the plant floor and what kind of information is typically needed at the business layer. And then we'll turn it over to Abel to talk in more depth about what is Wonderware Enterprise Integrator, how to use it, some real world examples and a demo. So Wonderware today is used in one-third of the world's plant facilities of 20 or more people. It's the global market leader for industrial SCADA and MES software. We've been around since 1987, and something that is very unique to Wonderware is that you can take an original Wonderware application from the early 90s, the late 80s, and seamlessly migrate that to the current version today, running on Windows 8 or Server 2012 R2, even in a virtualized environment. So the preservation of investment for Wonderware, something that our customers continue to appreciate and Wonderware does a great job of investing back into their customer base and their products to, to make sure that your investment is a, is a safe one. And Wonderware is very scalable, allowing you to, to start small, maybe just running on a single computer connected to maybe a single PLC, and grow incrementally over time as your business requires, um, get, uh, giving access to, uh, to more people, more data, uh, connecting to the entire plant floor, and uh, adding functionality, including uh, things like OEE or product traceability, or in this case, Enterprise Integrator for business system connectivity. Wonderware NorCal has been your resource since 1992, so we are local here in the Bay Area. We have offices in San Francisco and in Healdsburg. We offer free San Francisco-based workshops as well as on-site at your location. Those are getting started uh, hands-on classes, and you can see the list of those on our website, norcal.wonderware.com, and register for those. We've got uh, training in San Francisco, and we can do training on-site at your location. And Wonderware Corporate is based in Southern California and Lake Forest and you can uh, do training there, as well as we have online training. We've got local technical support, local system consulting and sales. That's part of my role is uh, technical system consulting and, and uh, supporting the sales team. And then we have a uh, partner channel of over 70 system integrators, registered Wonderware integrators here in Northern California to help you with your projects. And that is a picture of Daniel Nicholas. So we have dedicated uh, phone technical support. It's a big difference uh, for us in the marketplace that we've got folks that really know the products, um, very responsive, and can help answer your questions right away. So a little bit about why use Enterprise Integrator. What do we, you know, why, why are we talking about connecting the plant floor to business systems? Well, a common theme across all of the, the plants that I get to visit, and I, I get to visit a lot of them, is that uh, people are trying to do more with less. They're trying to get the most out of their resources, including their, their assets, their equipment, their, their people, uh, their raw materials. They're trying to cut waste, uh, waste in uh, terms of uh, uh, product quality, waste in terms of time wasted, and, uh, and, and a lot of people have lean initiatives, lean manufacturing initiatives. So again, trying to get the most out of our investment uh, to, at the end of the day to increase our bottom line, to remain profitable, and support our, our growth targets and goals. And so one way to do that is to automate processes that maybe typically are done um, 
uh, manually or traditionally been done uh, with, with people, um, entering data by hand, collecting in, uh, information by hand, having to then uh, re-enter that information a second or a third time into a database and a reporting system. And what happens then is that information is not readily available real time. It's 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 late. A lot of times, pe information people need they don't they're not able to access for sometimes a, a day later or even even longer in some cases. So being able to automate these systems and uh, the data collection and presenting that information to the people who need it to to make real time decisions to to react to what's going on in the plant floor is incredibly valuable to uh, our customers. And so the goal here, or one of the goals, is to we've got a we've got a plan. We have a strategic plan and an, an objective uh, that we we draw up in the uh, uh, in, on the on the business layer. But then we actually need to execute that plan on the plant floor. And, and how do we get the feedback from the plant floor that we're actually following the plan, um, that we're actually meeting our go our targets and our goals? So. Wonderware and, and Wonderware Manufacturing Operations Software and Enterprise Integrator give you that closed loop feedback to see what's going on in real time on the plant floor and, and give anybody access to that information wherever they are, including if that's a, a business system that needs some real time uh, event or activity information. So the one to where platform approach is that we've got the operations management layer covered, and so that's the layer between the plant and your business management systems. So as we move from the plant layer, which is the real-time layer, that's where we've got our real-time devices, our PLCs, we've got real-time plant floor activities happening, and then we've got the business management layer up top, which is more of like the enterprise resource planning, um, other types of business systems that are more transactional in nature. We can basically normalize that data uh, from the plant and just send up the important information that they need at the ERP level. So, you know, the ERP level doesn't need all of the real-time information. They just need some of it. And so Enterprise Integrator is going to help us just bring up the needed information, the important information that's needed at the business layer from the plant level. That can include examples of, of work order status, um, product specifications, uh, recipes and set points, um, driving uh, standards from the, the, the business layer down to the plant floor and, and tracking how we're, how we're doing according to plan, what's our actual versus our, our, um, uh, the plan. Uh, information that could come from an HMI, whether it's operator data entry, uh, from a barcoding system, an RFID system. So there's a lot of different places where that information could come from. And uh, one of our MES customers find that that integration of the plant floor to uh, the business layer uh, is really a differentiator for one of our in the marketplace. So we've got a lot of experience connecting the plant floor and, and then presenting that information in a contextual way that uh, can be very useful at the business layer. So this is a bit of an eye chart, but the, the basic product stack here, if we kind of start at the bottom, we've got uh, real-time data sources, we've got plant floor data sources, again, that can come from uh, batching systems, PLCs, that can come from manual data entry, that can come from forms, electronic forms that we have, uh, and we bring that data into system platform. System platform uh, is a model-based platform. What does that mean? It means that we collect the information in context of your actual plant and the equipment and the areas of where that information is coming from. So that's really important on the retrieval side because then you can retrieve it in a way that really makes sense uh, based on where that information is coming from. So that is another big differentiator for Wonderware in the marketplace is that we have a, a plant model that, uh, that you build up to represent your physical plant and processes and, um, and then you can leverage that data model all the way through to the, the business system layer. On top of our system platform, which is kind of our real-time um, uh, layer, we then have our manufacturing execution system layer that sits on top of uh, the system platform, and that can, can include things like dashboards, the work order execution, the product traceability, the product specifications and bills materials, procedures, um, inventory, inline quality, and things like OEE, overall equipment effectiveness. So those are modules, that the MES modules that plug into system platform, and then we can roll that information up to 
our business systems using Enterprise Integrator, such as our ERP systems, whether that's you know Oracle, JD Edwards, SAP, and so on. Uh, we've got different uh, systems like asset management systems, uh, LIM systems, uh, supply chain systems, product lifecycle systems. So all these things that, that really are kind of separate, um, come from different vendors, um, have different ways they prefer to communicate. Uh, Enterprise Integrator really ties all these things together. And doesn't even actually have to have Wonderware involved. Uh, Enterprise Integrator can truly actually just be a, a way to integrate business systems, um, even if uh, you're not initially even using Wonderware um, to, to solve the immediate problem you need. Um, over on the left-hand side, you'll see we also have workflow, Wonderware workflow for business process management. Um, so that is the real-time notifications to people with um, what's going on. That in can include uh, um, standard operating procedures they need to follow, uh, electronic forms they need to fill out. Um, so really, Wonderware is a true platform, very, you know, big differentiator for us in the marketplace to give you, you know, the functionality that you need uh, today and tomorrow. So I'll go ahead and turn it over to Abel now. He's going to go into what is Enterprise Integrator as a uh, intelligent delivery engine. Great. Thanks, Mike. Um, Abel, I'm going to go ahead and pass the presenter all over to you. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you. We yeah, can hear you just fine. And now we... Yes, perfect. Thank you. All right. So uh, let's get to it. Uh, Wonderware Enterprise Integrator. As an agenda, I'll go through a little bit more about myself and the company that I work for, Callisto. Go through what is WEI and, and why does anybody really need WEI? We'll then talk about the current state of Wonderware Enterprise Integrator as it sits on the Wonderware product website. Uh, when do you use WEI? Go through some value-based customer examples where customers saw value in the WEI product. And then as you're talking and uh, thinking through some of the ways that WEI can work for your business. Uh, we'll go through some of the planning and next steps on integrating with WEI. So again, my name is Abel. Uh, I work for a company called Callisto Integration. Uh, we've been in the, I've been in the business for about five years. Uh, the first three years were actually uh, as a programmer on the front lines of uh, implementations with customers. Uh, one of my first projects was actually an integration of WEI, but now I've moved into more operational consulting and account management in a sale, more of a sales role at the company. The company that I work for, Close to Integration, we uh, work in many different verticals, whether that's uh, food and beverage or consumer packaged goods, aerospace, specialty chemicals. Uh, we're a manufacturing consulting and systems integrator with over 26 years of experience. We're also the only endorsed systems integrator that's also an endorsed software partner. And part of that certification is because we, as Mike mentioned, developed WEI. We have global reach, about five offices, two of which are headquartered in Europe, three in North America and Canada. Uh, and we really are broken down into four business segments. We offer services in consulting, in mechanical engineering, we have a controls team that programs PLCs, cabinet drawings, and they've implemented over 2,500 control systems worldwide. But the one that I really want to focus on is MES. And really, if you get down to what MES is at a very basic level, MES exists to take a manufacturing process and take what might have been an occasional bad day and start generating consistently good manufacturing days. So what does that mean? What does that mean in the context of WEI? Well, I'll share with you an example of a customer that I recently visited. This customer, as part of their business process, would gain information. So inventory manifests might come into their receiving area. So as they're receiving raw materials as part of their manufacturing process, uh, you talk to that area and they say, well, I go about my business, I generate a report, and then I give that report to Sally in the in the planning or accounting area, and I give it to Joe in on the plant floor. Joe and Sally, they take that inventory information, and they take that report, type in that data into their system so that they can make use of that information. Now you can see once Sally and, and Joe are done, they might print another report and send it to another system, maybe order fulfillment or uh, distribution. So you can see the inefficiencies there. Uh, having to duplicate that data across multiple systems and hand key that data in, it's cumbersome. 
even if you were to take that one step further and say that now we've moved on to Excel spreadsheets where data is now in digital form, there's still a lot of dross and a lot of manual intervention in order to get the data to the right place at the right time. Maybe you need to manipulate that data. And so that's a need that it can be serviced by WEI. So you look here and you see WEI in the center and it's taking information from different data sources, whether that's a formatted file, a planning tool such as SAP, might be the maintenance management system within SAP or any other tool, a scheduling system, a laboratory quality system, information with, from within Wonderware. But think of it in, in broader sense. I had a customer that they had a piece of quality equipment that would take and analyze their pieces in their manufacturing process, but it was an old piece of equipment and it would only spit out a CSV file. We can take that CSV file, pull it into the central system, and as you'll notice in the central system, we have a message history. It's not just, hey, I'll send it over or I'll toss it over the fence to this other business system. There's full audit and traceability of how that information gets transmitted throughout the different systems. So in summary, WI acts to connect systems that are not always easy to connect through information, connect information from the business to the shop floor and vice versa in a bi-directional manner. You'll notice the arrows go up and down. And it does this on a platform that facilitates a consistent and easy to use mechanism for that information transfer. So without WI, what's often missed? Well, sometimes you might have a homegrown solution or you might have a developer on site that's provided some of this functionality. But a lot of times it's that throw over the fence type of mechanism where you send the information off and 99% of the time it works, but you really don't know for sure. There's no information history. If something aired out, well, just send it again and hope that it made it this time. A lot of times there's no ability to manipulate the data. So in the case of that CSV file that's coming off the shop floor, nobody's going in there, or if they are, they're going in manually to change the data and manip manipulate it in a way that makes sense to the receiving system. People have made entire careers, and I'm not knocking on those people because I use Excel quite a bit, but people have become experts in transposing data and making sure that it makes sense to the recipient of that data. So why WEI? Rather than throwing it over the fence or firing and forget, there's a store and forward mechanism. Well, why would you need that? Well, if you're in any sort of digital system, you'll know that your network doesn't always work. Uh, network outages happen. Uh, you know, people start watching the Super Bowl and network just gets congested or there's a YouTube video that's circulating across the office. And so when that network is down, those messages that were meant to be sent are not just thrown away. We know what those messages are. They're stored so that when that network comes back up, we're able to forward those messages on to the rightful destination. For the purposes of auditing, there's also information history, as opposed to no knowledge of having messages sent or received. If something happens, you can tell what happened to what message at what time. There's that centrally managed translation of information. You can see the data that was coming in, how it was managed before it's finally sent off. Whether you're looking at a system that came from vendor A, vendor B, vendor C, you can see how all this data comes together and it gets sent out through a centrally managed system and that allows for business continuity. So in summary, WI facilitates the information between systems. Maintain message history so that you can recover in the event of a disaster. When you're back up and recovered from that disaster, you haven't lost any data. And this all happens automatically. So I, I've said a lot. Um, proof is in the pudding. Let's go through a demonstration. But before we do that, let's talk about what's going to happen. So we have an order that needs to make it to the shop floor from a planning tool. We're going to use a very simple XML file drop. We're going to basically drag and drop a, a file into a folder that WI is looking at. That file is going to get processed so that that person on the shop floor can see exactly what orders need to be fulfilled. He'll work against that order to consume raw materials, and we're going to send that raw material consumption up 
back up to the planning tool so that they, to Mike's point, can, compl can, can compare theoretical, what was supposed to happen, to what actually happened. Okay. Okay. So, as you can see, we've opened Chrome. WEI is available in any HTML5 capable browser. There's no need to install any additional software on the client machine. The website simply pulls data from the server. In the right-hand corner, you'll see that I'm logged in. This facilitates Active Directory or any other uh, security mechanisms so that users are only presented with the information that they need. The message log shows all the contextual pieces of the messages in WEI to show transactions going in and out. The information is, again, not just thrown over the fence. The messages have context such as location, date, time, even a status. And as we can see here, all of the messages are green because they were processed successfully. We're going to simulate a message coming in from an ERP, let's say SAP, that gives our MES the information it needs to create a work order. It allows you to filter the list on the top there based on context like time, category, a summary of the message, even the message contents. So here we see our shop floor system. Again, browser-based because the industry is moving in that direction. A list of work orders are, is shown here, and we can see the work orders increment and our latest work orders work order 1005. We're going to use a template to create the new work order details. And so you'll remember we had 1005. We're going to create work order 1006 through 1010. Now, here we're simulating a simple file transfer, but other methods of communication such as database queries, API calls, web services, uh, even standard ERP interfaces like MII or BOPIs are available. So here we can see we've dropped the message. We go back into our shop floor tool, our MES, and we can see after we refresh our work orders that were just dropped. In WI. The WI location took the data and put the appropriate pieces into the MES system. And so now we'll go back to the MES system to post production and consumption records. Now we're obviously going through a manual process here, which sometimes happens, but it can also happen in real time automatically. So we're going in here, we're starting the mixing operation for what in this example is an ice cream plant. We go to the milk mix as an output, and we say that we want to consume some heavy cream against that output. The goal here is to send the transaction back automatically. So we'll go in, highlight our heavy cream, look at the consumption. We're requiring 900 gallons, so we'll just, for the sake of austerity, put in 900 gallons, consume it. You can see it's shown in the shop floor system. We go back to our WI instance. After a refresh, we can see the consumption record going back up. So whether it's in real time or near real time, uh, we're able to transmit that data back and forth from the planning tool to the shop floor. You also notice it's a, if you have a Surface tablet or you work in Windows 8, it's got a very modern look and feel, a pretty easy to work with. and. Uh, As a recap, uh, we took the MES order, dropped it through an XML file transfer from the planning tool. It generated a new order, and we posted a consumption. So in essence, the MES activity has gone full circle as part of the production cycle. So we use work orders and consumption records, but really you're not limited. You're really only limited by your imagination. Even for information that's sent uh, that's very similar, so say that we're sending production orders or even material master information. Material master refers to the recipe or the bill of materials that go into producing a, a finished good item. But sometimes, you know, you might have co-products or byproducts. So what might be a simple process for one process, for one application, say you're making jet fuel, and there are no byproducts to jet fuel. Um, that varies from making cheese, where say you're, as part of your process, creating that cheese, but you also have whey protein that comes out as a byproduct. The message structure is as individual as your process, because your process is what makes you successful. Other types of messages are gonna be performance, quality, uh, material and labor transactions. 
the execution of those work orders, so when a work order starts and stops, so that you know exactly what's happening on your shop floor. There's no guesswork at the planning stages. And if you're using Wonderware, uh, WI makes use of a middleware uh, straight to the MES database for reading and writing transactions. So if you go to the Schneider Electric Software Support website, you'll notice uh, you have two areas. You can download the software itself if you've paid for it with licensing, and uh, you'll see here that it lists 2012. Well, I'm very excited to let you know that Wonderware 2014 is going to be available within the week. Mike talked about that migration path. And so one thing that I'm really excited to tell you is that if you're going from Wonderware Enterprise Integrator 2008, 2012, 2014 R2, it's really a one-click update process. You go in, not, no data is lost, you hit a button, and you're onto the latest platform. So as Microsoft stops support for Windows Server 2003, uh, soon, probably within the next few years, 2008, you're able to leverage 2012, SQL Server 2012 R2, as well as all of the Wonderware stacks, like MES Software 2014, System Platform 2014 R2. It, it leverages all the modern software such as HTML5, .NET Framework 4.5. And what's new in this newest iteration is there's actually two versions. I'm trying to save you guys money if you guys don't need the very robust stuff, but the standard edition is a migration path for customers that use legacy supply chain connector within MES. Uh, the professional edition basically allows you to do just about anything you want to do in terms of integrating information from one system to another. It also includes example plugins and documentation. So when should you use WEI? In ERP integrations with SAP, here are some of the things that we've found out through working through and, and bumping our heads sometimes, but the learning lessons that we've come up across. You want to start with an integrator that understands system communications, an integrator or someone in-house that understands how your systems need to communicate, and use that person from the beginning of the project. Start talking through what information really needs to be sent down, and also what intervals. We found that with SAP, it can be a pretty arduous and sometimes expensive task of having multiple versions of the data within SAP. So sometimes it makes sense to have that versioned data within the shop floor system or another business system. What are some of the issues? Well, particularly if you're not using WEI, um, there's a danger that you get information sent to SAP and SAP just rejects it. There's no debugging, there's no real error that you see. It's just, when you look for the data, it's just not there. With WEI, you have the ability to have error handling in history. So we send something out to SAP or any other business system. If there's a model that uses handshaking, we can tell what happened, if it erred, there are automatic mechanisms to retry and to manipulate the data so that we see things like, well, SAP was expecting a number and you sent it an alphanumeric. There are ways to handle that. No data is ever lost. So this slide allows IT departments to rest a little bit easier because you're not forced to use an XML file transfer. You can use APIs, you can use web services, database queries. If you're a defensive aerospace company and you, and you handle uh, DOD contracts, there might be a security measure within IT that precludes you from using file transfers um, where the file could be intercepted. Uh, web services as an industry standard also allow you to do things like handshaking so that you don't just send it, you know exactly uh, that it was received and that the contents were correct. You're not also, you'll notice that we talked about the look and feel of Microsoft, and a lot of our plugins are written in .NET, but you can use C++, you can use Java, you have a lot of options there. The documentation create, uh, consists of a lot of samples, so even if uh, you're just opening Visual Studio or a development environment for the first time, it walks you through some of those commonly used interfaces. But then, as Mike mentioned, there's extensive training. If you need a classroom or a one-on-one -on -one type of training environment, Wonder Woman, NorCal, and Callista, we work really well together to provide that level of training that's appropriate for you. So let's go through some examples of customers that directly benefited from WEI. The first is a dairy company, and they went through a lot of the needs that were covered in the demonstration. 
orders coming from a planning tool like SAP that sent material information down and up and acknowledgments of productions and consumptions. The real buyback here, though, is that they used one implementation for all their global sites, nine sites where there was hand to our heart some work done on the first site, but then it was a rubber stamp implementation to take what was done in that first site and copy and paste, essentially, that implementation across their other sites. Low total cost of ownership. The next example is an ice cream factory, where they had the same needs for orders and materials to come from their planning tool, but they also needed specification data. And when I say specification data, I mean they wanted to be able to tell what tests needed to be taken on the shop floor to ensure that they were delivering quality product. So if they needed to take a pH test, the operators knew on the shop floor. They also knew what the target of that pH test was, what the upper and lower limits, what the sample frequency was. And the interesting thing about this customer is they didn't use SAP. They didn't use Oracle. They didn't use any of the off the shop floor boxed solutions. They had their own. They had a homegrown solution that they dearly loved, but because of WEI's flexibility, we were able to use WEI to still marry that data across the two different systems. A food company, again, we're looking at orders, material master, and quality. But in this case, they needed inventory records too. And it wasn't just we're sending information from one system to another. It was a one-to-many relationship. So while information came in to receiving on uh, raw materials being brought into the plant in general as part of the supply chain, that data needed to go to the shop floor, to the accounting tool, so that they knew if they needed to order more because of a lack of inventory. And so there's this one-to-many relationship. And again, just like our previous customer, the same 35 messages, so a big footprint, was used around the world at multiple sites. The fourth implementation is one that's uh, pretty interesting. It was with a candy company, and they had a need to gain greater visibility to uh, things breaking on the shop floor. And they had SAP preventative maintenance. And when they approached SAP to say, well, how do we you know, allow people on the shop floor to in real time send that uh, something broke or is about to break on the shop floor straight up to SAP? Well, they were quoted something in the hundreds of thousands of dollars as anybody that's worked with SAP can relate to. Um, and so they came to us and they said, well, what are all what are our alternatives? And in this case, we had developed some in-touch screens for them, some supervisor control screens, where operators were already used to pressing a certain button when something was breaking down. So what we did is we changed the plumbing behind that button a little bit so that when they would hit that button, it not only sent a message to the people on the shop floor, it also sent a preventative maintenance message up to SAP's preventative maintenance module. Price in the order of like tens of thousands as opposed to hundreds of thousands across all of their plant floors with little to no change in the operator experience. There was no need for training. So as I talk through the examples, you might have been thinking, oh, okay, well, that could actually work for my implementation. So in simple terms, use WEI when unrelated systems need to communicate, whether that's MES, Oracle a laboratory system, system platform. What system platform really did for integrating to devices on the shop floor, control systems, WI does for the transmission of information. We don't care whether you're using SAP, Oracle, a CSV file. We'll find a way to communicate with it. So what's required? Uh, existing systems usually have a predetermined format that needs to be used. Knowing that format helps a lot. Knowing what data is required by all systems, so you kind of look at it from uh, a, a very high level before getting into the details. Determine your endpoints and what uh, methods you're using for communication. If you need to work with your IT, get them involved. Let them know what their options are. Also, figure out what, what data is common across your multiple systems. Along with that, 
the timing and the triggering, sometimes uh, you have different needs for different systems. While your shop floor system might be able to handle transactions on the fraction of a second across multiple assets, so you're looking at thousands of records on a second, sometimes your planning tool can't handle that. If there's a consolidation of data or an aggregation that needs to happen, or if you don't need data in real time, what if you just need to report at the end of the day? And posting those transactions on the half second create network issues. You have the options there. It, the flexibility is really what is key there. There are built-in configurable mechanisms for setting up those frequencies, that consolidation of data, retry mechanisms, et cetera. So sometimes you'll have something that's time-based, something, sometimes something that's event-based. It supports both. So with that, I hope that kind of got your thought process kind of going with um, WI and its capabilities. I'll uh, let you guys open it up for questions. Great. Uh, thanks, Abel. We do have a few questions that have come in. Um, the first one is, are there any plug-and-play interfaces in WEI? Well, um, so there are. If you're familiar with Supply Chain Connector, there are a lot of examples that go through basic functionality within Wonderware. So what we know, we have built plugins for. Uh, the trouble with a lot of integration projects is I've never run into an SAP uh, integration, for example, where one interface was exactly the same as another. To illustrate that, um, I was recently working with a customer that over 70% of their uh, SAP implementation were Z tables, which were essentially custom tables. So what WI does for you is it provides a platform for consistent communication and the mechanisms to make that efficient. Uh, it, we kind of leave it up to you guys to figure out, well, what does that interface really look like and give you the tools in your toolbox to do that efficiently. Okay, thank you. Um, the next one um, is WI covered by Wonderware software support. I don't know if you or Mike want to take that one. I, I can take that one. It's it's definitely covered. Um, Wonderware will, will help in uh, the support mechanisms. You call the same number that you would for any other Wonderware product. Uh, I don't know if Mike you wanted to add anything to that. Yeah, the Wonderware Enterprise Integrator is sold through the Wonderware distribution channel. So the same folks that you talk to for the rest of your Wonderware software, uh, you would call to talk to about Enterprise Integrator. So that includes uh, both uh, sales as well as uh, project support and technical support. Thank you. How long does an implement implementation usually take? Um, it really depends on the complexity of the implementation. Uh, it can take as little as, you know, a couple weeks to, um, depending on the number of sites and the number of messaging locations, uh, really, it just depends on the complexity. Thank you. Um, one other one. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Is it right to say WEI is necessary for MES implementation? Is it necessary? Uh, not, not explicitly, uh, just like uh, WI doesn't need MES to exist, uh, MES doesn't need WI to exist. It definitely helps fill needs, but there's no need to have one or the other. They're not mutually inclusive. Yeah, I think an, an example of that is, um, you know, a, a client wants to see OEE dashboards, they want to see overall equipment effectiveness, they want to understand, you know, where their downtime is occurring and, and the, the reasons for that downtime. You know, you would need Wonderware Enterprise Integrator, per se, uh, to drive that up to, you know, your ERP system. That's going to be more of just a, a real-time dashboard, um, and and you may have some reports against that that, um, that you know, maybe use SQL Server reporting services, for example, but don't don't require your, your ERP system or to um, really to get involved to to monitor something like OEE. So just as an example, I mean it it really boils down to you know what information is needed at at the uh, um, in the business system 
you know, not, not just at the business layer, because you could, you know, you could access MES information, you know, um, through some of the Wonderware web portal, um, MES web portal um, applications to, to view information and to view reports. But, but as soon as you need to actually transfer that data into a business system, that's when it's really, you know, valuable to, to look at the enterprise integrator. Yeah, in, in Mike's example, as soon as uh, you need to take that OE information that was on a TV screen on your shop floor and uh, hire an intern to look at that TV screen and enter that data into another system, that's when you're uh, really looking at leveraging something like WEI. If it's repeatable, uh, data exchange between systems, that's a good fit. All right, thank you. Um, one question is, what is the licensing price structure? Mike, can you? Yeah, yeah, sure. That can answer that. Yeah. Um, so, enterprise integrator, as I mentioned, is is sold through the Wonder Word distribution. So, um, there's it's just pretty much just a um, uh, you know a license as far as the how you how you purchase enterprise integrator, and it would be for you know the, the enterprise integrator server. So that that includes you know development capability as well as the the execution of the inter enterprise integrator services to to do all the transactions. Um, so, you know, typically you're only going to need one Wonderware Enterprise Integrator license per plant. Um, so if you've got multiple plants, then, you know, you'd buy a, a license per plant, and that's that's the most typical uh, implementation we see. Able, does that just add anything to that? Yeah, no, if, if you're familiar with the historian, uh, it follows a very similar model where, you know, we have a lot of customers where they might have SAP at a corporate level, and so to send order messages, for example, down to the different plants, they'll have an at a WI instance at corporate. Uh, they also have one at the shop floor. I'm um, not the shop floor, but the individual plants, so that you can see the granular pieces. But really, uh, there's an aggregation that can happen all the way up. So uh, that you have flexibility there. It really depends on the need. But yeah. All right. Um, the next one, how do you protect your, the plant floor control system when information can be exchanged in two directions, unlike Historian with push technology? That's a good question. Abel, has that, has that come up at all um, as far as, you know, using uh, a DMZ, for example, uh, to, to provide a buffer between the plant floor and uh, the ERP system? Um, have, you, have you done any implementations like that where you're using Enterprise Integrator and, and like a, Z, a DMZ? Yeah, so um, the, the typical network architectures do have a DMZ between the control systems and even the shop floor system. Uh, if that doesn't exist and you only have one between the business system and the shop floor system, the, the big piece there is you're very much handling the message transactions. So while you can interface WI to machinery on the shop floor, you're very much in control of that message. And uh, I've never... I shouldn't say never because I have a limited subset of what we've done, but uh, there's no scenario in which I can think of that data would be pushed out to a PLC where it, you're not controlling that message. There's validation just like you would have interlocks on a PLC there. There's validation and control mechanisms on WEI as well. And you have full visibility to anything that did happen. All right. Okay, so the main, the main point being you have you have control of those messages. Um, so you you can um, you can determine how they're sent, um, mm -hmm. um, and so that would and with the the use of uh, of, a, of a DMZ and the appropriate uh, routing that you could um, mm -hmm. you could use some some IT best practices to 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 limit you know what what information can and can't be sent between the two between the the networks. Yeah, definitely, and there's planning that goes into it, so there shouldn't be any surprises as to where the information is being sent or what's being sent. It follows, uh, it's not really ad hoc information sending, there's structure to it. So yeah, I, I, yeah, what you stated is correct. Okay, um, can WEI 2012 only work with System Platform 2012 or later, or are they independent? They're backwards compatible. All right. And we have System Platform 2012 and InTouch 2012, but an older version of WEI. Can we upgrade smoothly? Yes. And the, as long as there, there's some things you need to consider, so plugins, you know, kind of live a life of their own. If there's a technology upgrade, so say that the middleware changes and now you're, uh, you know, the middleware that you were hitting in 
you know, MES 3.5 is suddenly no longer available, there are migration paths that you need to take. But in general, yeah, um, it's pretty one-click in terms of WI itself. The plugins themselves sometimes uh, require a little bit of attention. Okay. Let me just check. I think that wraps up our questions, and I think it does. So thank you, Mike, and thank you, Abel. That was a great webinar. Um, this webinar was recorded, so if anyone would like to review a portion of the webinar um, or share it with colleagues, um, it'll be available on our website and also our YouTube channel a little bit later this afternoon. So thank you, everyone, for attending, and have a great weekend. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.